Hello and welcome to JHEP's AQA Dijkstra's algorithm. I know I say Dijkstra's is actually Dijkstra's and I spelled it wrong as well. D I J K S T R A Dijkstra's algorithm. And uh, you usually use Dijkstra's algorithm uh, to ask yourself what is the shortest route to get from one point to the next. Prims and Cruz Cow's one was find it, um, was just basically just finding the minimum connectors, but this is actually trying to find a route. So let's carry on with that concept. There's a bit of terminology for you. Um, the first one's a temporary label. You'll see what temporary labels are when we actually do the thing, um, do the example. But this number that is um, that is temporary can and might change. Um, a permanent label is one where it's not going to change anymore and the stage is the order in which you converted the temp labels to permanent labels sound a bit confusing let's move on to the next one and then hopefully you understand a bit more oh which i forgot to say um nxl students would usually have this box and it's just basically given the three bits here in in all fairness it's actually a bit easier aqa students you just have to do it the special way which you're going to look at now. Um, this is specifically for AQA but in Excel students can have a look as well and basically the question is how do you get from A to C okay so here's A and here's C. So first of all you start off with a temporary label and um, the start point is always zero okay because to get from A to A is zero right and that is coincidentally all and um, always our permanent label so what you do from here because this is always zero the starting point is always zero what you do from here you try and find uh, um, what you do you go along this road okay let's call them roads we go along this road and we see what number we end up with when we get to B so the length of this road, let's say the length of it, is 9. So 0 plus 9 is 9. And that's going to be our temporary label. Okay? Because if we go through another place, for example, F, let's say, for example, F plus 4, and that equals 7, we would cross it out and write 7. So this number can change at any time. It's not definite. Okay? And this is stage 1, by the way, or stage 0. Um, so we've done that, and if you walked across this road, along this road, the temporary label would be 6, and along this road it would be 3, okay? Now what you do next is to find the temporary label which is the smallest so far. So 3 is the smallest temporary label. And now we're going to convert that to a permanent label, okay, because we're not going to change that number anymore. We are not going to go backwards or anything, okay? So what we're going to do now is to find out um, what the numbers will be, what the temporary labels will be at D and at F. So we're traveling along here. So E plus 10, we have 3 plus 10 makes 13 okay because we started with 3 and then we're walking along the length of 10 and we ended up with 13 to go from E to F we do exactly the same we add this permanent label to the weight of it to give this temporary label so 3 plus 3 is 6 so since 6 is the same as this 6 we don't need to change it and since these are the only two pathways E is um, associated with, apart from EA, but we've already used that, um, that's it. Now what you do, you look for the next shortest, the next shortest number, which is 6. And then you convert that into a permanent label. Okay? And... If you want, that's stage one, that's stage two, and that's stage three. Okay? So, six plus four makes ten. 
And since 10 is bigger than 9, we don't need to cross out 9. 9 is a smaller number here. 6 plus 10 is 16, so that's our temporary label for G. And that's it, okay? Because we're always work we're always going forwards, not backwards. So we'd never go backwards back to A or back to a permanent label. We never go back to a permanent label. And then B um, is our next smallest number. So we box it and that's our permanent label now. And then 9 plus 8 is 17, okay, because we walk along that road. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 is smaller than 16, so we can cross out 16 and write 12. See, this is why it's temporary, because it can change, as we just, as you've just seen right now. Um, and that's it. So the next number we choose is 12, because, oops, because that is the next small number. So 12 plus 7 is 19, so we don't need to change that, because 17 is smaller than 19. 12 plus 4 is 16, we don't need to change that, because 13 is more than 16. And that's it. So we um, we put a permanent label box on 13. The box is just to signify that it is a permanent label, by the way. Um, in the exam, you're required to write down the numbers and cross it out, like what we've done over here. So don't rub it out or anything. So now D13 is our permanent label. So 13 plus 20 is 33. That's obviously bigger than 17 so we don't need to write it down and that's the only pathway we've got here so um, if you really want to you can uh, you can box 17 now what we need to do we need to work backwards we need to work backwards so if I'm underlining and we need to find out the shortest route and what we do we need to we need to essentially take away this node because we're working backwards. We, um, we need to subtract this node from the weight and make sure we get the permanent number at the end of the road. Okay, so let's say C 17 minus 8 is equal to 9. Okay, so we know that from C to B, because 17 minus 8 is 9, that's correct. If we did 17 minus 7, that will give us 10, not 12, so that's not right. 17 minus 20 will give us minus 7, so that's not right either. So we got from C to B, and that's 8. Now we need to work backwards again, and 9 minus 9 makes 0. So that is our way to go. So from B to A, and that's our shortest route. C, B, well, you need to swap it around as well, by the way. A, B, C, simple. And for um, A at Excel's one, all you literally need to do is to write the stage one, the temporary labels and the permanent labels, the stage one, um, and obviously the corresponding stages as depicted in AQA's one. So you should still have a look at it. It's exactly the same principle, it's just that you've got a nice little box to put everything in. Okay. Um, with directed networks, it's the same principle, it's just that you're not allowed to go along this road, for example, because it's a one-way street, and if you go opposite if you go the wrong way up a one-way street you're going to be in big trouble not with other cars but just with the police so what you've got to do you've just got to modify your Dijkstra's algorithm and find out your shortest path using the directed routes and there's so many directed routes here and then when you get to C when you get to the end one and you need to work backwards you work against um, you work against the um, the directed road, for example, because we're working backwards. So we're not going to um, so we're not going to go along this road because that will be going forwards. 
we're going backwards so we're going to go across this road okay next one Dijkstra's algorithm would not work if you've got a negative value anywhere so for example if we've got a triangle here and it was 8 7 and minus 8 um, if we apply Dijkstra's algorithm here it will say that the minimum weight would be well would be 7 okay and that's not right because it's got a minus number here okay last one but not least in, the, in an adjacency matrix the numbers here tell you how many vertices are connected to each other so if we draw it out very quickly from A to A there's nothing okay from A to B there's nothing from B to A there's two that means that the direction is going both of them are going from B to A both of them are going from B to A since there are two vertices both of them are going from B to A okay and the last one B is going to be like that from B to B it's just going to be like a little loop okay that is it for Dijkstra's algorithm.